Pepe pack. Our miniature backpack for now. Mainly I just wanted a little bit higher video quality so that I could use the daily vlogs for YouTube. The phone works fine and has its purpose in its place. I use both. Uh, so we got Pepe here. The live view is actually inside in a pocket. I carved out a hole beneath Pepe. So uh, it's bonding on two SIM cards right now. It should be three and I'll show you how. This is the Live View Solo. You can combine the power of four SIM cards into one video transmission signal, but we're not doing that. Uh, again, that's the 1,000 subscriber goal, and it's quite costly, particularly here in Korea. Also very costly in Japan. So, uh, the Live View has two USB ports, and I got these two 4G USB dongles. Those are both plugged into the USB ports. One here, one over there. And then you can combine a Wi-Fi signal and an ethernet. So that would be three and four. And that's kind of what makes this setup sort of large and clunky and necessary to have a backpack. So I'm not using ethernet. I'm just using the two USBs. And then I have a, a phone. I've turned on the hotspot on this. And then this can connect to the hotspot whenever my phone is in range. So I don't plan to always be in range. I walk away a lot during the day, whether it's me going to the bathroom or I have to tend to something. But uh, for the times I am in range, it'll be able to make use of that. All right, I got all three connected now. Running at about 3000 kbps or just under. Normally if you wanna do something like 720p, you need at least 3000-ish. We do 2500 outside to be as conservative and low as possible. We expect to use about two terabytes a month. With this setup, I have a phone and it's got the stream elements companion mode activated there and so that's also connected to the live view one of those modems has the wi-fi on so it's sharing the connection it does take a little bit of bandwidth to to run the audio on the alerts uh, otherwise it can get choppy and laggy so uh, to be kind of conservative i'm backing down the numbers uh, this does work though and i'll show you guys how I've managed to make the media share transfer as well. I'm going to show you first the solo page, Go Solo Live View. This is what the site looks like when you log in. The picture of the encoder right here. It's already transmitting to my second Twitch channel, CJ Walk. Uh, I don't know why it's transmitting at 4700 because I have it set to 3000. Uh, I don't actually want it pushing too high because my SIM cards are throttled and I need extra bandwidth again to run my media share. So that's what's going on with that. Um, I have LRT. It's already toggled green to be on. And LRT just stands for Live Use uh, Version of Cellular Bonding. And that's again where they combine multiple signals into one. There's a couple different servers around the world. I think the closest one to me is Singapore, so that's what I use. Is there anything else left on this page? Uh, start and stop, so I don't have to reach into my backpack to start or stop the stream. I can just do it on my phone, basically. Um, you do have to physically hold down the power button, though, to turn off the unit. Some people add graphics. I think it costs like 75 bucks a month. I don't know how um, customizable this is, though. I don't know if it's just like some kind of logo that's there, or if I could run stream elements overlays through that, I don't know. Um, but I'll show you something else I do that with so that I don't, I don't really need this at the moment. And then here, the destination, I have it going to a dedicated server also in Singapore. So the way it works is we have our encoder here, two SIM cards in the USB, and then one from the hotspot on my phone whenever I'm nearby sends the video out three different ways all the way to Singapore to a live view server that then takes those three back into one and combines all the signals to make the original video and then on this page is where in the destination field I tell it to send that video I managed to find a nearby dedicated server in Singapore that 
was kind of reasonable. So the reason why I haven't done this like dedicated server stuff before is because it's expensive and tricky to get working. There's a risk of quality. I've always hosted the servers myself, but right now, as is, I don't have a dedicated IP at my house here in Korea. And I stopped paying for the home internet because it just wasn't working. So I can't host it myself. And that's why I've been streaming with the cell phone for the past couple months. But uh, I've been trying different solutions the one I found last night was Xenix 5. So they're just selling different kinds of servers around the world. And I wanted mine to be as close to Singapore as possible. I picked their cheapest one, 120. It gets you a Linux OS. It costs maybe 10, 15 bucks more if you want a Windows OS. So it's, uh, it's definitely not a great computer by any means the the processing is is kind of weak it's not a gpu server there is no graphics card um that would be ideal right we want to be able to encode using obs and a graphics card to have the best image possible but we'll worry about that again when we reach 1000 subscribers for now i just want something that's reliable and stable and a tiny bit better than cell phone is okay it does say five terabytes okay I said earlier, probably going to average two, maybe more. Depends how many hours I'm putting in the month. So five is uh, enough uh, for streaming at 60 FPS. We're going to need more than two terabytes. Will it be more than five? I don't know. I'd have to sit down with the calculator. But I've gotten pretty good at like averaging that stuff out and knowing exactly how much I'm going to use. So this is probably okay for most people, even if it's not unlimited. All right. So this is the OBS screen on that Singapore server. I had to turn all the settings down for it to work. Again, it's not a great computer, but it works. So I have uh, everything here set on 720 for base and output resolutions. The downscale filter is set to the poorest quality one, which is called bilinear. Um, there's like bicubic and tricubic or something that offer better video quality. And of course, uh, I'm just aiming to maintain 30 FPS. There's no way in heck this machine will be able to do 60. It will drop frames at higher settings, pretty much any other settings. I have everything lowered. So uh, I've got the stream element overlays back again. Finally, I am using the stream elements OBS uh, plugin that goes into OBS and it gives you the well, it gives you a few things. I closed most of the panels and left just the media request one open. Um, now the trick is getting media to play outside. This is how I get my alerts, music, anything playing on the computer to play on my Bluetooth speaker when we're outside so that we can all hear it. And already on the screen, you can see this program I have open called Soundwire. And this is the magical app that does that for us. So Soundwire works on Linux, Windows, and mobile. I'm using the pro version. You'll probably want that. It gives you a couple more options. It just sends exactly what you can hear on your computer to your cell phone. And then I have my Bluetooth speaker connected to my cell phone. And that's how we hear the media share and the alerts. So on the sources tab, I already have, you see stream elements, it says Scott's, Scott's Playground. So this is what brings the audio from what we see here on the bottom of the screen. I can hear it on my headphones, the computer, and Soundwire sends it to my phone because my phone is also running the same application. Uh, we did a short test with this tonight. Worked okay. Sometimes we were getting slight FPS drops, like 28, 27. Never lower than that that I saw. It's good enough and still kind of comparable to what a cell phone does, except we're using the Sony camera. So that's all I'm trying to do for now. It will make the YouTube edits look a little bit better and I won't be cutting off my head and my neck. Sony camera has such a wide angle. It's better than the, the Samsung S10 wide angle selfie with a wide angle lens. The Sony cam wide angle is still wider, but we'll see when the Samsung A80 comes out if it's uh, any better or not. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. A80 launched yesterday. 
not in Korea. We can't get it here. My next chance to look at it will either be... I don't know. Maybe not till TwitchCon. Thank you for watching, YouTube. If you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord where we can help you at discord.gg slash cgride.